Are you ready to sew together your caroling cape? Well, today, that's what we're gonna do. Hi, I'm Christina, and I love to digitally apparel pattern, creating unique pieces of wearable art. And today, I am so excited to be sewing together this fun caroling cape. If you don't have the pattern, you can definitely get it down in the link below. And if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see other fun ways of putting together PDF sewing patterns, as well as other fun digitally apparel patterning. Well, let's dive in and get sewing. First thing you're gonna do is print out your pattern, cut it apart, tape it together, and then cut out your pattern pieces. Then it comes to laying out the fabric. I always like to make sure that I am lining my fabric out on the straight of grain and lining it up with my edge of my cutting mat here. But if you're lining it up with the edge of your cutting table, it just makes it easier to make sure your pattern is on grain. The next thing we're gonna do is lay out the pattern onto the fabric, make sure that it is lined up with the grain. And then we're going to be pinning it down so it doesn't move. Next. You're going to want to make sure that you mark out the dart and neckline of the pattern and then pin around and make sure the pattern piece will not slip while you are cutting it apart. I do not have seam allowance in my original pattern here, so I am adding it as I am cutting it out just by lining up my ruler with the edge of my pattern. Then I also want to make sure that I am adding the seam allowance around the neckline before cutting it out. Last thing you want to do is you want to make sure to mark your arm armhole open slots here. Now we're gonna fold up this piece and I'm going to cut the other side of, the, of this pattern out using the other side of this wide fabric. Again, I'm gonna line up my grain, making sure that I am adding my seam allowance on the front as well as on the side. Mark out the neckline and the armholes and then I'm going to begin cutting it cutting it out. Now that it's cut out, I'm also going to put this one aside. I'm going to redistribute my fabric because my table is not large enough to just keep moving down. And as I redistribute, I'm going to then lay my other pattern right on top of my fabric. It is extremely helpful if you can have a friend help you to really get it lined up so that it matches up perfectly. When you are pattern matching, it's always essential that when you're cutting that second piece, you either mark on the pattern piece where the pattern lines up or you put the pattern piece right on top so that you know that your patterns will match up. It is a essential step in the process that will make your garment look that much more professional if you have all your patterns matching. Then again, we're going to remark the neck dart for the other pattern piece and cut out this pattern piece. I don't need to redo any of my cut lines because uh, the, I did that in the first pattern and I'm using the first cutout piece as my pattern piece. Then we're gonna go and do the exact same thing for the other front panel piece. Line it up, make sure it looks all happy and good. And then we're going to retrace that neckline for the bottom. I always love to use tracing paper and a tracing wheel because I love the exactness that it provides me. So I always recommend using a tracing wheel and tracing paper. 
now I have the cape basic all cut out. So now I have to cut out the cape ties as well as the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the cape ties next, lining up the fabric so that it matches up on a line. And I'm just going to be following one of these lines all the way down uh, on my pattern. Once I have it all lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it away, creating my two inch uh, cape tie that I will use to tie my cape shut. Next, we have to cut out the hood. So I'm going to pin it down and cut it out. I included seam allowance on this pattern piece in my original pattern. And then I'm going to pattern match it. So I'm gonna move the fabric, flip it over, make sure you flip it over so you have your two right sides together. Make sure all my pattern is lined up from side to side and top to bottom. And once I am happy with it, I'm going to cut it out. Now this is wool, so it didn't move on me very much, but if you have slick fabrics or anything, I would always recommend either weighting down your pattern or pinning down your pattern pieces so they do not move on you. Next, it's time to serge all the pieces. I always like to keep the inside as clean and crisp as possible, so just serge around the edges of all the pieces, creating a nice clean look to help maintain the longevity of your garment. Once they're surged, I am. I always like to kind of start with some of the basic things because I like to sew a whole bunch and then iron a whole bunch. So I'm going to start by pinning together the seam of my hood, ensuring that my pattern is matching up exactly how I want it to. Now it's time to sew it together. Make sure to backstitch at the beginning. And as I move a couple of inches in, I'm double checking to make sure that the Pattern matching is lining up the way I want it to. That way, if it's totally off, I can redo a small bit instead of the whole bit. Next, I'm going to move on to the side seam or the side front seam. So I'm going to be pinning top to bottom and because of they're both on an angle, I'm not too worried about the pattern matching here. If you have a big bold print, you might need to worry about that a lot more, but because this is such a small fine print, I do not need to worry about that as much. Make sure you clearly mark where your armholes are wanting to start and finish. So I pinned in the opposite direction than my other original pinning to know that is where I'm going to start and stop my armhole sewing. Then you're just going to stitch it together. Start at the bottom, backstitch up to your marking pin, backstitch, and then move to your next marking pin, backstitch, and go all the way up to the neckline. I always recommend when you are sewing together on a not straight of grain, you always wanna start at the bottom of your garment and work upwards. It's especially important when you're working on the bias of garments because then it's not going to stretch on you down, uh, causing other issues. So I always recommend pinning and sewing from the bottom up. Next, I'm going to sew the shoulder dart. So I'm going to fold it in half and mark where the dart should end, line up my tracing lines, and then sew it down, back stitching at the top and bottom. Clip your threads, then uh, that piece is done. So I'm going to move on to the opposite side of the cape. Now, if your pattern is very similar front to back, make sure you are making two halves of a whole cape. You don't wanna make each side of it and then realize that you accidentally only have the left side because then you'd have to rip some stuff out and redo it. So it is essential that you make sure that you are doing the right sides together. And then I'm lining up for my armhole. Starting at the bottom, working to the top, sewing to my marking pin, moving to my other marking pin, and sewing all the way up 
to the neckline of the cape. Now it's time to iron. So I'm gonna be ironing open the hood seam that I sewed very first so that it is nice and crisp. To make any garment, you wanna make sure that you are providing a professional look and ironing between major steps. Then I'm gonna iron the facing of the hood. So I'm gonna turn back half an inch and iron it down and then turn back a full inch and iron it down. And I am using a seam gauge to make sure that my I am ironing the correct amount down. There are multiple other ways that you can provide guidelines to yourself or anything. I like to use seam gauges. Now I'm going to move on to the cape and I'm gonna iron open the side, the side front seam, making sure that I also iron open the part of the seam that is not actually sewn that will become the armhole. You want that pressed down nicely so that when you sew it to hold it down, it does not move on you. Next, I'm gonna to move to pressing the center front uh, facing back. I'm going to press in half an inch and iron it down. Then I'm going to go back to the top and press a inch and iron it down. Again, using my seam gauge as a guide. Now it's time to sew it. Since I did a really good iron, I don't feel like I need pins to hold it down. If your wool is still being a little cranky with you or anything, I would recommend pinning, but it is also not necessary. Once you have your center front placket done, you're going to stitch open your armhole. So I always start at the top and then I sew a foot's length away from the edge to give me a nice guide. And you just wanna stitch that seam allowance down so that you can easily get your hand through and the seam allowance doesn't accidentally flip to the front or to the outside of the garment. I'm also going to sew the facing down of the hood so that it is ready to be added onto the cape. While I am working on the hood, I'm also going to be putting in my basting stitches across the bottom that will gather into the cape. So you wanna have two rows of basting stitches, making sure not to backstitch at the beginning and end, as well as leaving a length of thread at the beginning and end to ensure that you can easily gather in your stitches. Now I'm going to sew up the center back seam. Again, I want to match up my patterns because I did take a lot of time making sure that I could match up my center back patterns. And the center back is going to be a lot more noticeable than the side front seam. So I am definitely taking a little bit extra time to make sure I'm pinning and going to have a nice pattern match right down the center back of my cape. Then I'm going to sew it together, starting with a back stitch at the bottom and double checking my pattern matching as I before I get too far along and moving all the way up to the neckline of the cape. Now it's time to iron open that seam. It is always essential to iron open the seam before you have to sew the seam. That way you're garment looks nice and crisp and not puffy. And now since I'm about to add on the hood, I also am going to be ironing down those shoulder pleats and I am ironing them down towards the center back seam. So now it is time to line up that hood and pin it on and pull those gathering stitches so that I can gather it down to the cape neckline. You wanna make sure that you're distributing your gathers nice and even all the way across from center back to the front of the garment. And I always like to throw in extra pins to make sure it is nicely and evenly distributed the way I want it finally so that I don't come across surprises halfway through. Then it's time to sew it. 
I do like to make sure that I am pulling my pins, especially with this thick fabric, so that I have a less likelihood of breaking a needle or bending a pin or hurting my machine. Making sure that all those folds and gathers are laying the way I want, and I'm working nice and slow all the way across that neck hood area. Now it's time to add on the cape tie. So you line up the center of the cape tie with the center of the cloak and I pin outwards to each of each side. Then I'm going to sew on the cape tie, pulling out my pins as I go. And this is the first stitch in creating the seam binding to create the nice kept cape ties. Once that's on, I'm going to fold down my seam allowance and fold it over towards the cape side and pin it down. This is fully encasing all of that seam allowance there and creating a nice clean line. Once I have it all pinned nicely, I'm going to then top stitch the edge of that binding, holding all the seam allowances down within it and creating a nice neck line. This is very thick fabric, so just be aware and work slowly and pull your pins as you go to cause less problems with your needles. Once that is done, it's time to create the tie. So you wanna move out, make sure you are on the right side of the tie. You're going to want to insert a safety pin headed back towards the cape and close it up. This will help you turn out your cape tie easy. So then all we're going to do is we are going to stitch that, that safety pin into the cape tie and stitch as close back to the cape as we can. Then we're going to clip our corners and edges and we're going to slowly feed back that safety pin back through the tie, flipping it to the right side out. There it is. Now I take my safety pin out and finish picking out and getting that corner as crisp as possible. Then I'm gonna go back to my iron and give it a really good press, putting that seam allowance facing at one edge and the fold at the other. Once it's there and I'm happy with the press, we're gonna go back and top stitch close the small hole opening that is connecting the cape to the cape tie. Now it's time to hem your cape. I patterned in an inch and a half hem, so I'm going to be ironing up half an inch all the way around the bottom of my cape and then I'm gonna go back to the start and I'm going to iron up another inch. This cape is a high-low cape, so it is shorter in the front and longer in the back. If you want an even cape, go ahead and put on your cape and have somebody else mark it even all the way around you. Or if you're looking for a more drastic curve or anything, this is a great time to put on your cape before you hem it and have somebody else help you mark how you want it to be hemmed in the long run. But once you have it ironed down, you, it, it is time to top stitch it. I went ahead and just top stitched my hem. There are people who don't like that look on a hem and they will do a hand stitch cross stitching or some other way of hemming it. But because of the pattern and the longevity of this cape, I decided to do a long or a top stitch all the way around. And there we have it. We now have a finished cape ready to wear. And there you have it. You now have this amazing caroling cape. I really hope that yours turned out and you love it as much as I love mine. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see other fun videos on how to create fun pieces of art like this. If you really want this pattern, you can definitely find it down in the link below so that you can also make yourself a caroling cape.
I look forward to seeing you in some of my other videos. Happy sewing!